So University Hospitals, we treat uh, both young and old, so the adult patients at the Heart and Vascular Institute, and then patients who are still unborn in, in the womb. And Emmett is one of those whose story began even before he was born. We were so excited. Start a family. We moved to a new house, big backyard, you know, just we like had images of the kids playing in the future, going through, you know, the baby books of names. It was always Emmett, kind of from the very beginning. I don't know, it was just a name that we both liked. The first ultrasound that we had, our doctor said there's a spot in the on the heart, it should be checked out. Yeah, well, it's probably nothing. I received a call from one of my obstetrical colleagues uh, saying that they had a, uh, a mom, expectant mom, who had a fetus that um, they suspected had a congenital heart defect. And I remember at that doctor's appointment, at the, after having the echo, he told a girl that works there um, to take Annie to the consult room. And I was thinking, oh, that doesn't sound, that doesn't sound too good. His diagnosis was concerning for a condition called uh, pulmonary atresia with intact ventricular mm -hmm. septum. And this condition, uh, if left untreated, will develop uh, into what's a single ventricle heart condition where you only have half of a heart. The problem with that is, over time, only having one half of your heart doing the job of two pumping chambers, um, eventually that heart will tire out. Uh, somebody just told them that they have a very significant heart defect. You can imagine everything that's running through their mind, uh, what kind of anxiety, stress. Once we received the diagnosis, I mean, yeah, it was a bit of a shock, obviously. Came home, it was kind of like, what is, what's happening? Like, our world kind of just flipped upside down. You could look up on the internet or whatever, type in pulmonary atresia. I know I did, and you go down a rabbit hole of worst case scenario, and you, you go down a dark place. This is a pretty tricky heart disease. The pulmonary valve is kind of like a door that's just stuck closed, and so as the pumping chamber below it is trying to get blood past that door, it can't go anywhere. Because there's little flow or absolutely no flow across that valve, the heart on the right-hand side stops growing. We've seen this disease before. We've actually intervened on pulmonary atresia, intact ventricular septum, and two other patients. So we're pretty well versed in taking care of these uh, patients. He recommended we do the in utero procedure, which he assured us it'd be the best option for Emmett moving forward. Obviously, it seems risky. I mean, you're going through me to get to the baby to open it up. At that point in the pregnancy, his right ventricle kind of started to slow down, um, so they thought it was time to intervene. I just remember that it happened so fast. Timing of when you do this is really crucial for outcomes. We'll intervene around 25 to 28 weeks of gestation. At that time, the heart's about the size of a small strawberry or a grape, but we've had really good success with the particular procedure that Emmett eventually underwent by threading a balloon and that opens up that stuck valve. Emmett underwent a successful fetal cardiac intervention and he made it to 39 weeks uh, gestation when he was finally born. Yeah, we just couldn't wait to hold him and meet him. That was, that was our goal towards the end. We just want to meet him and hold him. Yeah. It's a humbling experience, the amount of trust that our patients put into us. We really trusted Dr. Stranick and his team. Best in the world. Emmett has a good outlook now because of them, so. He's the happiest, healthiest baby you can see.